del autor publicado en Harvard, Business Week, TechCrunch, VentureBeat y Giga Om es Larry Young. CS183 E Lecture 12 is meant to be fun, insightful, and funny where it's really supermodel literally times three, supermodel times three, where it's a supermodel where you want to uh, have skills that a supermodel has with being able to show things, uh, emphasize certain things, uh, dress a certain way, conduct meetings in a certain way. It's also supermodel, yours truly, and a super entrepreneurship model. So supermodel times three. Let's have some fun. Let's edit that cadaver of a dead startup so that way we can practice and build muscle memory for entrepreneurship execution. Supermodel, it means three different things inside of CS183E lecture number 12 where we're editing a dead startup. We are practicing on a, a dead startup, a cadaver, a dead entity. And what we're going to be doing with supermodel is it means to be a supermodel, to see supermodels, and to actually overlay a super entrepreneurship model. So it means three things in CS 23E Lecture 12. Initially, it's the Mr. Incredibles slouching, slouchy slouch uh, picture where he's not super happy. So. Supermodel, uh, it's going to be fun, it's going to be entertaining, it's going to be super insightful because it's a super entrepreneurship model. Editing this dead startup. You don't want to have three people showing up like triplets. If your other two co-founders are Asian and you're Asian, you don't want to be three triplets. If you're Indian and your other two co-founders slash co-editors are Indian, you don't want to show up as three triplets. This is exactly how you want to show up wardrobing. You want to look as look like two coders and one business person. That's an ideal team. Actually, the most ideal team is two to five coders, all our CS majors all promote. But you want to have the two coders that are showing up to code, not necessarily stepping on each other and not necessarily in cliche mode. So you want to have a, a diversity in wardrobe. So two dudes dressed like dorks, One person dresses like the slick business person. But if you are underage, if you are under 21, non-drinking age, you, and let's say you're 19 years old, you want to show up wearing a tie. doesn't matter if you're the coder. Uh, you want to show up looking older than you are. And that's part of modeling where, where Michael Dell is the engineer who's selling, or in his case, not necessarily the full engineer, I think industrial engineering. But... You want to show up as an engineer with a tie on that looks older than they are because your knowledge is going to be that of a 40 some year old in technicality, in technical know-how, in, in technical competence, but you, your face and your wardrobe doesn't want to look like it's 12 years old. You want to look at least a little older. That's why wearing a tie very critical. How to supermodel and pull and record notes. That's very much a sequel to the bend and snap. The, oh my goodness, I dropped my pen. Bend and snap. Pull and record is a sequel to bend and snap simply because we as founders want to try to control the sales meeting. We want to control our VC meeting. We want to control any meeting by pulling out a pen and taking notes. That's the sequel to the bend and snap. And I'm going to include and embed the bend and snap video right here because it works in a way to charm the people that we are trying to seduce. When used appropriately, it has an 83% rate of return on a dinner invitation. Wow. <laughs> It's called the bend and snap. Watch this. I dropped something on the floor that I need to pick up. So you bend and snap. See? Come on, you try. Okay, so from the bend and snap video that was just that was just played, that's supposed to be funny, but as critical is the pull and record. I'm restressing this, and I'm actually restressing the entire lecture of lecture 11, which is the pull and record maneuver helps you take notes 
to then close these deals. Pulling out a pen and paper absolutely is the thing that didn't get a deal done and that's why the start that you're editing is a cadaver because those deals never got done because pen and paper were almost never at hand. So the, the pull and record is truly just a, a prequel sequel to the pull out pen and drop contract, pull out pen and drop agreement. So the pull and record is a precursor. It's momentum. It's, it's, Momentum where there initially wasn't any. You're, you're literally engineering momentum from just pulling out pen and paper. That's why that thing died. That's why some other stuff died, which is the next video, dying and dead. Died and is now in cadaver status. It's where somebody wrote the postmortem is the fact that not enough deals got closed. So a supermodel lecture 12 is taking a pen with the contract or the agreement or the notes, taking a pen, setting it down, saying nothing until they pick up that pen to initial the five different spots, not necessarily sign an agreement, but maybe sign an agreement, but definitely initial, do I understand that you need X? Do I understand that you need BC? Do I understand that you need CDE in that potential sequence, in that very specific protocol? That's what you're doing with, with supermodeling and dropping that pen. When older people who are in positions of power are evaluating us, they're not listening and understanding and processing the innovation that you're pitching and promoting and mentoring these dinosaurs, these seasoned executives on. They are really just judging how you are in a meeting, whether or not you're listening, how you're note taking. And so a pre-existing team is awesome because there's actual uh, muscle memory in helping to execute fast. Dinosaurs, uh, AKA seasoned executives, they are trained to look for pre-existing teams with muscle memory so that way they can ex execute incredibly fast. So you wanna dress the rainbow, you wanna dress the diversity, but you very much want to execute and present yourselves as a team. There's a ton of Asian people that are milling about all over Silicon Valley and VCs refer to them as the Justins. Inside the book, Inside Y Combinator, they refer the YC partners, y, YC, y Combinator partners refer to groups of Asian kids as the Calvins. So when you're getting referred to as the Calvins, you want to be two to five CS majors, all sell, all promote, but dressing uh, the gambit, the full spectrum of person that shows up in a suit, person who shows up in flip-flops, but as a team. And that way you're convincingly showing that your pre-existing team will have muscle memory in execution. You don't actually talk, but if you were to talk, you wouldn't step on each other. And then if you were to have a teammate talk, you would stare at that teammate, giving them your attention while they are speaking. This is critical, is listening to your teammates while you're pitching, not just waiting to talk. Older people, they actually don't understand technology at all. It doesn't matter if they're the chief technologist or a venture capitalist. They can only see how well we listen and how well we take notes. They'll ask some semi-intelligent questions, what they think is intelligent, but they actually have no idea what they're talking about. Which is why when we're modeling, we need to really model ourselves by listening and taking in that information and having our chin and eyes and hands and shoulders in the perfect listening position. They'll try to put us into boxes. So what we want to do as uh, models and as helping them put us in a box is that we want to be not necessarily exactly like the prototypical cliche uh, hacker. And there's this quote that I've put up in a tweet right here is that of the two coders and two hacker coders and one that wasn't, it was not readily apparent which ones were which, meaning we couldn't exactly tell which one's the salesperson and which two people were the coder or which in the best case scenario, 
who's selling and who's coding, we don't know because it, they all seem like they're selling. They all seem like they're coding. That's the super situation that you want to mimic and pattern replicate. In Engineering 145, 2010, 2012, we would rotate CEOs. That was critically important because that way you don't have put the two hackers in a cage, which is from CS183YC, hashtag CS183YC. You don't wanna have the CEO or the salesy promotion pitch person put the two coders in a cage and kind of not let them talk. So what we would do in Engineering 145 is that we would rotate CEO. So everybody would get a chance to be CEO. It's a 12 week class, uh, 20 lectures, and not always the same CEO would pitch. So we would rotate a CEO. That's the ideal formation where you really can't tell uh, pecking order. Incredibly super model. So initially supermodel is how you dress, how you act, how you behave. Uh, second part supermodel took two seconds revealing that I'm a supermodel. Third portion of lecture 12 supermodel is this super entrepreneurship model. And that is this diagram right here. I'm gonna lay it out for you right here. There are actually a chasm within a chasm. This is the super model. And I've got an embedded video that will walk you through how to cross the chasm. This is going to be lectures 14, 15, 16, and 17, where this is the super entrepreneurship model, which is also known as crossing the chasm from the right. Here, I hope you enjoy it, and this is the start. CS-183E. I'm incredibly excited and nervous to bring you CS-183E lecture number 12, Crossing the Chasm. CS-183E for edit, Crossing the Chasm. This one lecture, this one video, is entirely worth your cost of tuition. It's worth so much because this is still an issue for Silicon Valley. This is still a real problem. And this is a problem that was first identified and nomenclated and cited and sourced by V. Jeffrey Moore. He wrote this book in 1991. I realize this is far before you guys were even born. Not by much, but still before you were born. This is still a problem. And this is the reason why the startup that you're working on, it's dead. And the reason was the chasm was not crossed. The chasm was not crossed. So in this lecture, we're going to actually cross the chasm for that dead cadaver startup that we are practicing on. We're going to uh, execute some of these uh, basic business recipes in crossing the chasm. Now, not to sound like a cocky bastard, which I am guilty of once in a while, but this will work every time, 95% of the time. Yeah, that's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be from Ricky Bobby, uh, Talladega Nights, uh, and even though I'm regurgitating and copy-pasting Will Ferrell, that does not make it less true. So, crossing the chasm. So this is the, the chasm, and this is, in essence, uh, a PhD thesis. And the reason I call it a PhD thesis is not because I want to do anything with my bachelor's degree, but because I want to convey and uh, transfer knowledge that my mentor, Mark McCormick, gave me. Mark McCormick is the author of What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School. So to go over the chasm, this is uh, where the nerds buy, this area right here. This section right there is where the visionaries buy. That's the chasm. Then in this area, in this area right here, the pragmatists are buying. This is where conservative people are buying. And this is considered Main Street. So uh, when normal people, pragmatists, and when conservatives buy, that's Main Street. And then the skeptics and the naysayers, they buy here. Skeptics here, naysayers here. So that's crossing, that's the chasm on the other side. Now, the reason that we're editing the startup is that startup is dead. And 
we are going to cross the chasm by working inside of the chasm, doing something that Paul Graham wrote about, which is what Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of? What Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of? And so this is the happiness. This is happiness. This is people and that penis looking shape is what Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of? Here it's labored uber black because as you guys historically may know or may not know, Uber also crossed the chasm from the right by focusing on black cars. And Uber Black wasn't called Uber Black, it was just called Uber Cab. And all they did was black Lincoln town cars. They didn't do cabs, they only did black town cars. And the reason that this is the main, this is this wider curve here, okay? This is something that's widely popular amongst many people. And that's the Westin Hotel. That's Google. And up here is Taxi, where it's not popular with anybody. People still use it, and it's just not, it doesn't make people super happy. And the concept here is focusing on making a small group of people, read the essay, Paul, what they don't, what, what Altair Basic is this a Microsoft of, Paul Graham where you're focusing on making a small group of people incredibly ecstatically happy. So this is happiness, and this is a uh, number of people. So it's a small number of people that you're making incredibly happy. So what you're trying to do in crossing the chasm, and this applies hugely, and I don't know if Paul Graham just doesn't read Jeffrey Moore, or doesn't connect with Jeffrey Moore, or is competitive with Jeffrey Moore, but this is the Jeffrey Moore diagram underneath. You've got the chasm. So you actually want to put the penis area, okay, into the vagina area. Not all the way in, but just into this little sliver. Let's just call this the, the, the special spot, the Grafenberg spot. So, and I'm not even joking here, and I'm being 100% serious. So you're trying to focus your, you're trying to take two people. Paul Graham's book, what, Paul Graham's essay, what Altair Basic is this a Microsoft of, and you are connecting it to Jeffrey Moore's Cross the Chasm from the Right. Now, hopefully I haven't lost any of you, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit here to go into what exact vertical you're going to be practicing in. And this is a pattern, a pattern that I recognize, a pattern that you're going to be replicating, and then you're going to be pattern iterating you're going to be pattern iterating this exact pattern, which is you're going to be focusing on just selling in this area, in the main street area, where you're just going to literally be three CS majors that are going to be doing sales and selling. Now, to also backtrack, you're combining, you're combining the chasm. You're combining the chasm by crossing from the right. You're adding another... You're adding in another thing, another brand, another uh, adopted item that connects. So up above, you have the penis, okay? I hate to call it the penis, let's call it the cigar. So the cigar inserts into the chasm, the cap, the, the, the female part of the entrepreneurship. So here you've got a large brand, and coincidentally, a Westin hotel. People love staying at a Westin. So you host an event at a Westin or across the street from the convention center. So this, these are things that are help to mean, mean to, to get adoption by trying to do these two simultaneously spending effort into this chasm area. This chasm area where where you're massaging it and you're attacking that chasm angle from something that's adopted. So here, uh, the Westin Hotel is a rebrand from the West the West Urn Hotel, which at the time was not super adopted because it wasn't super popular, not like it is right now. And what the Westin did to cross the chasm back when it was the Western 
is they focused on making a small group of people really happy by doing something called the heavenly bed. Uh, FTC disclosure, I make money from the heavenly bed because I was the supermodel for it. But a piece of furniture had previously never been promoted as a uh, item that was an anchor, that was an attractive thing to bring in. So when you're doing CS23E and you're trying to edit that dead startup, your focus is solving the problem of crossing the chasm, and that problem is that chasm doesn't get crossed. So you're using a litany of, of business tips. You're using a sequence of business recipes, and this is one of them. You host it at a Weston. Uh, a company called Salesforce held their first user conference inside of a Weston. Now maybe you didn't love Salesforce or didn't believe in cloud CRM, which is uh, here. Maybe you don't believe in cloud CRM, but you definitely think that the Westin is a really nice hotel, and that's why Salesforce held their first user conference inside of the Westin St. Francis. True story. So if you're taking notes, this is where you want to be at with this next solution. This next solution is you want to focus on an incredibly small vertical. You want to focus on on the cigar area. You want to focus on the cigar area of that startup. You want to focus it's an incredibly narrow, incredibly focused uh, vertical, which is that Uber Black, that customer CRM, that very uh, particular focused thing. Now, there's another phrase, you wanna write this down. It's called customer development cycle. I know I'm DJing in another mentor, Steve Blank, but the shoe fits and it's important. Now, customer development cycle is typically focused on this part. You don't just wanna focus on this part. You actually wanna focus on the larger uh, adopted area and then later on customize it and that's exactly how to cross the chasm from the right let me repeat that so you want to focus on a larger area okay and whatever that larger area is you want to start to sell and get a couple of small accounts and then those small accounts are going to ask you to do a small customization which is how you then go from here in doing sales as three CS majors, doing sales for a dead entity. And that's why CS183 is so powerful, so so unique, is that you're, you're literally doing something that has not been done before. Jeffrey Moore hasn't even written about it. He wrote a book about escape velocity, and that entails fighting gravity. This leverages gravity like your Bruce Lee, a five foot five Chinese guy who can kick a lot of butt being 100 pounds. I should know because a 105 pound Filipino girl could kick my butt and I'm like 6'5", 222 pounds. That's the solution right there, is you want to focus on something incredibly tight and incredibly uh, small as your initial market. That's the money shot right here. So if you want to pause at the 11 minute 46 mark, that's the money shot right there. You're looking at solution of doing what I refer to as lemonade stand and gua gua guacamole because you're going to be promoting something that exists. You're not going to be coming up with something new and that's what CS183 edit is. is e stands for edit something that is in existence. So, and to walk people through that process, this is so politically incorrect but it's so accurate. You want to help old people be less dumb. You want to help older people, okay? Actually not suck as much as they're used to sucking, which is a lot because they're old and they kind of don't know. This is going to make you giggle and laugh, okay? This is going to make you laugh, which is this actually works. Doing a business card for Uber where you are providing a discount code and a phone number that is available anywhere. Well, 
I provide one and people will literally call because they can't find the app store. Help old people be less dumb. There's my Uber referral code. I text it back to them. That's my name and email. This is what they want, which is, which is adoption of, or help me get adoption of some super basic thing because normally I would call for a limo and now I am needing to open up an app and find the app store. Old people, literally, they can't find the app store. They look for it on Main Street, they look for it in the phone book, it's literally on their phone and they can't find it. So all I do is text message back, text message back the, uh, the referral code. Now, there's a sequence of these recipes, these business recipes that I've outlined that help you get sales, the first small block of sales. This first small block of sales and these are all things that that develop in that little chasm area. That's the sweet spot, that's the solution, is focusing on a very specific vertical for the cadaver startup that died, the founders have left it, and you are trying to get it some traction. Now, all these things, None of these things are actually the new thing, even though I'm marketing it as Cross the Chasm from the right CS183E Lecture 12. It's really completely just the old way. Tim O'Reilly, he didn't initially start with the most innovative thing. He started promoting Sun and user manuals for Sun Microsystems because Sun itself just was too lazy to write a really good... Uh, dev handbook for CS majors to use. Oracle, same thing. They innovated the database, whereas IBM was just large mainframes and slow to innovate. I don't know why large companies are so slow and so non-innovative, because a small startup will always outflank and out-innovate a startup. Same thing with Salesforce. And they used, literally, they used the Weston Hotel to do their first user conference called Dreamforce. They initially did it as a half-day thing with a lunch. And Mark Benioff knew that if you've got something innovative, because he used to work at Oracle, you've got something innovative, it, you don't want to put it at a travel lodge. You want to put the, the, the user conference in your office that you're kind of slip sliding together. No, you want to put it in a nice hotel, thus the Weston Hotel. Apple did it totally the same way. They did not invent a, a personal music player. They just focused on an incredibly specific and small vertical and then it just grew and grew and grew and before they know it they had a music store. But initially they had a music player that was incredibly uh, unique and simple and that's how they cross the chasm for doing a half a dozen genius things like uh, the iTunes that's literally a music label. So hopefully these things have helped you for uh, college entrepreneurship. Um, you're editing something that's tight and uh, distinct and you want to work on it, improve it, get credit for that improvement and then later on Dump it's a strong word, but you definitely want to leave it and you don't want to have it be your permanent thing the way that this has become my life where I help people edit their credit report and augment their FICO score. And initially it started off sort of being a joke and the money tumbles in and it's no longer a joke. So college entrepreneurship, uh, I tried to emphasize that it was a lower uh, money value and a lower, but I guess college entrepreneurship wasn't that low of a money level for Facebook, who initially crossed the chasm from the right by doing a social network just for Ivy League kids uh, that wanted to meet and date.